So the most asked question I've ever gotten for these beginner's tutorials is this. We got this NPC right here, let's go talk to the NPC, and the NPC says, here is some gold. And if we look in our inventory, we gained 100 gold. Except now when we talk to this NPC again, we're gonna get more gold. And when we talk to the NPC again, we're gonna get more gold. And the question is, how do we stop an NPC from giving us infinite amounts of gold, items, weapons, whatever they're giving us? And you should actually already know how to do this. But let's just review anyway. So to start off, here is our NPC. It's a very basic player event NPC thingy. Let's go right here to where the dialogue is, gives us gold, and under here let's do control switches. Let's create a new switch. We'll call it stop giving gold. And as you can probably imagine, when this switch is turned on, this NPC will stop giving gold. So it's gonna say here's some gold, it's gonna give us 100 gold, and then switch to stop giving gold, it's gonna be turned on. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy of this event page and paste it. And now we have a complete copy of this on page two, except instead of giving gold and setting switch two to on, it's just gonna have a single dialogue. And this dialogue is gonna be, I have given you gold. So this is what's gonna appear after this NPC has given us gold. And, for make, and to make this so this appears after we've gotten gold, simply set switch, my switch, which is gonna be stop giving gold as a condition. Now when this event is active, the first thing that's going to happen is the condition for page 2 is going to be checked. If this is false, then it's going to go on to page 1 and use this event. Otherwise, it's going to be using page 2's event. So, say for example, at the very beginning of your game, stop giving gold, the switch is going to be turned off. So it's going to be using page 1. And on page 1, we're going to be given some gold, 100 gold, then it's, the switch is going to be turned on. Then when it's turned on, it's going to be using the other event, which doesn't give us gold and instead informs us that we've been given gold. Now, this is all perfect. It'll work perfectly. But hopefully, you've seen the flaw in this setup, which is the fact that we don't want to have it so each individual event has their own switch they have to use. And what I mean by this is this right here. As you may notice, we have a limited supply of switches. I mean, we could change the maximum, give ourselves 100 switches, and we have 100 switches available for use. But... In your game, you're gonna have a lot of NPCs and events that are gonna require much functionality and manipulation to make it so they do not repeatedly give you gold, items, weapons, etc. So there's actually a second way we can actually do this. And the answer is by using self switches. Now, if you recall from the switches tutorial, switches are gonna be global data that all events can access. But on the other hand, self switches are individual switches that only affect each individual event. So what I mean is to say, instead of doing control switches like this, let's go into the events and let's do control self switch right here. And we'll set self switch A on. Now self switch A is gonna be for this event and this event only. The other events will also have their own self switch A, but it'll be remain off while this event's self switch A is turned on. So let's go to the page two. Let's go to the conditions, turn off our switch condition and instead have our self switch condition turned on. Make it so it's self switch A and we are good to go. So let's review, once again, what's going to be happening here. We're going to have this first event active. It's going to give us some gold, then turn self switch A on. Then, when this event is repeated, it's going to be using the second page, since self switch A is going to be turned on. And like I mentioned before, self switches are only for each individual event. So having this event self switch A turned on is not going to affect any of the self switches of any other events. Furthermore, it's not going to take up any of your global switch slots, so you can use as many of these as you like per each event. Well, not really, because if you notice, each event only has four self switches, A, B, C, and D. And now when we test it out in this game, and we talk to this person, they will give us some gold. And if you notice, we'll gain 100 gold in our inventory. But if we talk to them again, they're gonna say, I have given you gold, and they're not gonna increase our gold whatsoever. And that's because self switch is now turned on for this event, so it's gonna be using the second page instead of the first page. And that's really all for this tutorial. It's pretty simple actually, but at the same time, it's very important that you use this in order to restrict your events to performing a certain action at a certain period. Let's try out one more thing. Just as a demonstration as for how self switches work and how eventing works all together, let's actually make another thing that goes on right here. Let's turn self switch B on at the end of this event. Now let's copy this event page and paste it and make page three's event condition be B. So now what's gonna happen is we're gonna start on page one. It's gonna turn self switch A on, which is gonna make it go to page two. Page two is gonna turn self switch B on, which is gonna go to page three. And let's recall exactly why this happens. Remember, 
it's going to first check the condition of the highest numbered page. So page three is the highest number. It's gonna check self switch B and see that's gonna be turned off. Next it's gonna check page two. And it's going to notice that page two's condition, which is gonna be self switch A is on, is also going to be false. So let's go to page one. It's gonna see it has no conditions. So it's going to use page one. Next, after this event has completely finished running and self switch A is turned on, it's gonna go back to page three, check page three's condition again. If it's still self switch B, which is false, it's gonna go to page two. But now page two's condition, which is if self switch A is turned on, is now true. It's gonna stop at page two and use page two's event. Finally, after page two is run and self switch B is turned on, it's gonna go once start again from page three, check to see if this condition is true. And since page three's condition is true, it's gonna do whatever's in here, which will say page three is here. So page three is here. And that's really how eventing works altogether. What we could do actually is go right here and turn self switch A off. But this won't change a thing because it's still going to start from page three and it's going to say, hey, self switch B is turned on. So it's still going to go here, even if self switch A is turned off. And that's really all there is. And that's all for this tutorial. If you enjoyed, please give this video a like, please subscribe and ask any questions of anything you want to see in future beginner tutorials. And that's all for now. Until next time, RPG Maker Tutorial end.